This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, before we start, any questions from anyone, anything, any clarification they need, okay, uh, on the demo session or anything they want to talk about? Are we going to have any practical or any daily assignment kind of? <clears throat> yeah, daily assignments will be there for sure because whatever we are going to discuss in this one hour, okay, I want all of you to practice that so that you will be able to understand the next session. So it is very, very important. Thanks for asking that question. It is very important that you practice whatever we are talking about today. So by the time you come back for tomorrow's session. So otherwise what happens is after a couple of sessions, you will lose that backtracking actually. So better to practice and live examples, real time examples, I'll be giving that, okay, uh, when we are talking about it, okay. I will not be able to demonstrate the code, okay, the real time code, okay, uh, to all of you, but I'll be giving you those real time examples and we can actually go, uh, be able to, create a CI CD pipeline for one of the uh, template codes that we are going to generate from my mind. And are we going to record these sessions and uh, share with the team? Yeah, I think it's getting recorded already. Okay. So okay. you can ask. Uh, okay, you yes, Rashpangaru, we do record the sessions and we'll be sharing daily, whether you attend or don't attend, we share it to all. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good. Any other questions from anyone? Hello, sir. Yeah. I'm Gopi, sir. Hey, Gopi. I'm not. I don't have any background from IT, sir. Okay. I'm electrical engineer student, sir. Okay. I am without knowledge about IT, sir. Yeah, no problem, Gopi, actually. So we will be starting basically from the fundamentals of how the development will be happening. Okay. And then slowly we'll getting into the tools which will help creating the CI CD pipeline. Okay. And we will take some sample code. So only thing is for you, especially, you need to work a little bit hard initially. Okay. In understanding the terminology, in understanding how the code will look like, code will work. Okay. And if you have any questions, you can post uh, in the chat here, or you can actually ask the questions. We can have a follow-up discussions also. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. No problem. Okay. So if we don't have any other questions, let's start. Okay. The DevOps. So in the demo, we have seen about okay. What is DevOps? Okay, and what are the advantages of DevOps and how DevOps is enabling the agile development methodologies, okay, uh, especially for fast delivery, okay, and fast release of features into production. Okay. And now we need to look at okay, so how are we going to enable this entire DevOps methodologies okay in your SDLC? Okay, so the moment we talk about SDLC. The first thing we always look at is okay how are we going to look at your code right so first thing i am not going deep into the agile development uh, practices okay but i'll give you okay simple uh, uh, some of the simple uh, methodologies around okay just to understand how the agile development works okay uh, for all of you right so Give me a second. I just wanted to take all of you through the agile development methodologies. Okay. Then you will understand what is and what is the need for. Okay. You need to at least understand the basics. Okay. Of agile.
<clears throat> so as we discussed there are various development methodologies basically to develop any project or a product okay from requirements collection to finally when you are going to put this output into your production environment okay so in that as we discussed initially it's going to take months and years to really deliver the end product but now as per the business demand we don't have that much time and uh, the customer base is changing the business is rapidly uh, changing the competition is changing every day so we definitely need a methodology which will help deliver things faster okay and that is agile for us so how are we going to <clears throat> look at agile it's basically a delivery methodology and simply as the simple diagram says okay that's the meaning of agile actually instead of all at once deliver incrementally that's the fundamental principle of agile so you are not going to deliver the whole product at once but incrementally deliver one at a time but working product actually every time you deliver when you say incrementally when even in the first sprint when you deliver something it should be working and it should be useful for your end customer for something or for some, some of the features that they need okay <clears throat> as, as we discussed so if you are planning to deliver a car okay so car's primary purpose is commute right okay so the first version you might be delivering a bicycle instead of two tires or instead of an engine okay so that will become a spiral model if you are delivering in individual parts actually because individual parts are not going to work okay but bicycle is better than a two tires sitting at home right so that's the difference between agile and the standard spiral development models so incremental delivery instead of all at once that's the primary motto of agile so what we call it as a okay scrum is basically a subset of agile so when you say it is a scrum okay scrum in the sense each incremental delivery is basically called a scrum okay so when you divide your whole project into multiple pieces okay or incremental delivery each uh, incremental delivery is called basically a scrum so how will the scrum process will look like if you look at this particular diagram okay what you are going to do is you are going to create a backlog okay of all the things that you want to deliver for the entire product let's say you want to deliver same thing you want to deliver the car okay so you are going to create a backlog backlog is nothing but a list of things that you want to deliver with the priority of course okay so you are going to let's say you have 10 different sprints that you wanted to run sprint again is each cycle is called a sprint okay so 10 different sprints that you wanted to run so initially you will create a huge product backlog okay so in the product backlog you will have like 100 different items and 100 items like let's say you adjust 10 items to each sprint okay so you have a huge product backlog then you will pick first 10 items okay which is high priority for you to deliver high priority features for you to deliver okay and then we'll combine them into a sprint backlog that's one sprint actually part okay that means in one release what are the features that will be delivered okay so you will have a sprint backlog so in that what's going to do is then once you get into the sprint okay so that that means you will have a sprint cycle actually so a lot of companies they follow a strict sprint cycle okay enterprise wise they are going to name or number those sprints okay say this is my sprint 121 this is my sprint 122 123 and all the projects that that entire enterprise will develop will be following the same sprint cycle okay so that way you will have a full control on this entire agile development across your company okay or across your organization so once you get into the sprint okay so usually you will not be able to make any changes to that feature list or anything but of course uh, not every company is following the strict agile guidelines so they will keep on changing 
some uh, basically pre-prioriting or deprioriting some of the uh, features that are into the sprint. Okay, so once you got into the sprint, okay, what happens is, as we discussed, it's two to four weeks and nothing but 30 days. Here they are mentioning around 30 days, four weeks they're calculating as 30 days. So two to four weeks, you will be doing a full circle of requirements, design, development, testing, and finally deployment into production. All these things will be going in this 30 days. Of course, there will be multiple reiterations. If suppose testing got failed, for example, what will you do? You will go back and do the development and come back and do the testing again and again till it gets fixed. Finally, when within those 30 days, you are supposed to deliver. There is no choice. Okay, So you are supposed to develop it, code, test, fix it, everything. Okay, And your new functionality will be, will be delivered. Okay into 30 days okay and on a regular basis this team is going to meet especially what's going to happen is there will be a scrum master I, i'm sure you might have heard about these roles okay and now we are calling them agility leads in the industry scrum masters are now getting called as agility leads so there will be a scrum master and the scrum master is the person okay that's going to keep this entire agile process together and everybody is strictly following the agile process. So in agile, there is no difference between a senior developer or a junior developer or actually any other uh, managers or anything. If you are part of a scrub team, you are going to deliver something. Okay. So that means let's say there is a five member team and you got into a sprint, there are 10 different items okay so the agile discussion basically the scrum there will be a scrum call actually usually so the scrum call which will be arranged by the agility lead will be discussed the they will discuss around okay you have these 10 features how many hours it will take to really develop this feature okay and they call this not by hours but story points okay so each item you will be assigning a story point Story point in the sense, a unit that will actually measure okay, your deliverability. So when I said deliverability, each story point, you can convert that as a four hours effort or an eight hours effort or anything based on your convention, you can actually decide what one story point means for your team. Okay. So once you decide what is one story point equal to, it is two hours effort or four hours effort like that then you can actually put number of story points for each and every item that you want to deliver. Then accordingly, you will be able to take how many features you will be able to develop in that particular sprint. Let's say you have a five member developer team. You can take only 20 story points, for example. Or if there is a 10, 10 member scrum team, okay, usually you will not uh, be having like two huge scrum teams. The ideal teams that is always recommended is seven to eight okay and there are teams that can be from five to 15 also five to 14 15 you can go but beyond 15 if you have a team that's huge better to split uh, split them into two different scrum teams okay so that's one uh, uh, ideal way so let's say go with the simple example of you have a five member team you have decided what's your uh, story point value is okay and then you're going to assign the story points for each and every task okay so once you assign and you can, it's actually an open forum where people can raise their hand. Okay, this is a UI part, I will take it up. Okay, or this is the database part, I will take it up. Or this is a uh, business logic part, I will take it up. So by default, Agile recommends every developer to be a T-shaped developer. Okay, so what do you mean by T-shaped developer? Okay. So if you nowadays, if you apply for any job role, okay, and uh, say that, okay, I'm a Java developer, for example, they're not going to ask you questions only about Java. Okay, so they are going to ask you, no, Java is your basically a vertical in-depth knowledge area, but what's your horizontal area? What is that horizontal part on the T? Okay, so horizontal is you need to know how DevOps works. You need to know how the database folks work. You need to know how the networking is going to work and you need to know how 
any other issues like be it the cyber or security aspects anything that's going to work in your project then you will be called as a t-shaped developer so by default agile expects majority or all of the team members to be a t-shaped developers so that's why anyone can pick any task so they can raise their hand and then they can pick and they will be as a table simply five member team they can decide who's going to do what but in case if that's not yet matured like your agile team is completely matured you don't have all t-shaped developers obviously you will be assigning those tasks based on who has the right skill okay so that's how it works so that's how the team distribution is going to happen in agile methodology okay and these are the various um, uh, aspects of our benefits for each and every role in a product group okay there are product managers project managers pmos okay so how a user story will look like basically you will have uh, a simple language in general okay so a user story is going to be as you can say as a developer okay i want to deliver this so that i can do this kind of a thing okay so this is a standard language they always use and they will also define an acceptance criteria let's say i am supposed to develop a particular feature okay a simple calculator feature i'm just throwing an example here a calculator feature i want to develop so as a developer i want to develop a calculator feature so that you can do this particular transaction that's it and acceptance criteria should be you can say this is how it will be tested okay and this is the definition of done okay so these two are actually very good important points in scrum okay so unless until a particular thing is meeting that acceptance criteria which you have agreed so they will not be able to put that into your final release package okay so that is very important and that means every feature that you develop must be tested and there should be a proper acceptance criteria let's say i can also throw some example not only the functionality but the code quality should be 95 percent okay and code coverage should be 100 percent okay something like this i can add those extra parameters okay or my open source scanning results should be more than 75 percent something like that i can add uh, to the uh, project so that will be my acceptance criteria not only the functionality working right so all those things will become your final acceptance criteria for each and every story point okay or user story i would call it as okay so you need to have that entire story and acceptance criteria and estimate estimate is where you will put the number of story points and important is basically your priority you can say it's like priority one priority two and accordingly you can define or decide whether this story need to go in this sprint or can be delayed for next sprint kind of thing okay that's the way the agile team is going to work and another thing is there are two different this is the various roles what are the scrum roles basically in a scrum team okay in general you will have a scrum master as we discussed who is basically the center person who's going to keep this entire team together okay and you will have a product owner so product owner is basically the person who owns the complete product delivery okay so a product owner will have multiple uh, technology teams with that person okay that means multiple scrum teams will be working on this product okay so and there is a very good way of actually aggregating all these individual teams right so you have a bigger product that you are developing you will have let's say three four scrum teams so each scrum team will have their own backlog okay and you will have overall product backlog so how will you aggregate all this particular code okay or the output of these scrum teams so usually what we call each and every individual scrum team sessions are s1s the scrum ones are actually what we call it all these scrum masters will join in a call and they will upgrade the feature development status and everything what we call as s2 okay the scrum level 2 basically and you can have multiple levels also so there will be a larger product you will have a group one so you where you will have three four uh, scrum teams you have another group two another group three like that so you will have s1 a smaller team s2 the next bigger team s3 the next bigger team you can go like that actually so in an enterprise sometimes you will have s5 s6 also 
okay so levels of scrums will keep on changing okay and even the scrum masters the titles will keep on changing okay senior scrum master or a scrum director okay or overall the head of products that these kind of things will actually change so the product owner is the overall owner for that product delivery okay and this is the person usually product owners need to have a lot of business and domain knowledge for that particular domain where you are developing a product okay they will be able to uh, understand and major and there will be a lot of pas under this particular product owner also and we call them as area product owners or under each area product owner okay let's say you are developing a large enterprise project for a particular uh, industry let's say telecom okay so each area product will be taking care of one sector of that okay and each area product owner may have a larger teams like with a lot of bas okay so that's the overall uh, product owner role and you will have the team which is nothing but your development team okay and how it's basically so these are some examples how the agile is going to save you a lot of money around uh reduction of failures and all these things but how this is getting possible is primarily using devops okay so if you are not able to deliver things faster using devops you will not be able to achieve all this okay even though agile says you are supposed to do the sprints you are supposed to deliver faster you are supposed to uh, deliver iteratively okay but underlying fact is that all these things are possible because of implementing devops so the more you leverage devops and the ci cd pipeline the faster you can do and the better agile uh, value that you will be able to uh, deliver okay and these are like some facts around okay overall industry trends and one another thing before we wrap up on the agile concepts is that agile can be done in two ways okay there are scrum teams there are kanban teams actually okay so the primary difference between scrum and kanban is so let's say there is a backlog okay and the backlog must be delivered within the same sprint okay whatever the sprint backlog is within the same sprint okay if you are following scrum but there will be some teams usually okay where you will not have a specific date of delivery okay or there will not be a complete clear backlog for example you are a site reliability engineering team okay so site reliability engineering is basically evolved from production management where you need some developers okay to really work on the feedback loop coming from production okay and a lot of non functional requirements that will be required for production management okay and in fact the next thing for anyone who's learning devops is sre site reliability engineering okay so you if you are working in those kind of uh, things where your total backlog is not clear because you are, you are not developing a product over there you are not developing a project over there you are working on your feedback loop if there is a feedback coming you will be working on it and usually you don't know how many days it will take okay so it's basically sometimes it will involve research and it will involve some of the iterations and you will be deciding later so if there is no specific delivery deadline that you follow for every feature that you deliver then you can follow kanban okay so the way we are working in scrum and kanban are same only difference is okay there will not be any specific deadline for the features that you are developing okay so that's and it depends on the team so based on which team you are working what is the type of work okay and you will be able to really look at okay um, what is the best thing for you and you can decide do i need to follow scrum or do i need to follow kanban okay and both are good actually and of course there are some companies which are actually combining these two and then they are calling it as scrum ban as well okay but yeah it's up to the individual company how they want it to implement okay so how does agile relate to devops okay so this is the part that we are more interested in right okay so basically there are uh, various uh, articles so we already discussed about how devops is going to accelerate or help the agile development methodologies okay because agile is supposed to deliver everything in a sprint 
within two to four weeks or 30 days as this example says you need to make sure you have all those things in place okay basically you need to make sure you have a pipeline built in such a way that in an one sprint actually for example even though you go with the basic testing and everything you will be doing a build and deployment and testing of your code at least four to five times okay so within this 30 days you are supposed to build at least four to five times your code and you are going to test it in minimum three environments at least an in integration testing user acceptance testing and either a pre-production or a performance testing based on your uh, project before you finally deliver it to production so net net so you definitely will have at least one build okay or a deployment a day okay? so you definitely need to rather than investing so many development or de deployment engineers okay you need to automate that entire process so that's where the devops come into picture okay so automating this entire build and release process right so that's where the primary value of devops will um, come okay so I think yeah you can look at some of these uh, uh, resources and it's a basically open uh, resources okay and you are there are some uh, books you can actually go through okay and this will help and I'm just uh, I, I can actually paste this or you can just uh, google it uh, as what is agile okay you will be agile development methodology you'll be able to get this link okay so nothing uh, uh, specific about any of these uh, things that we are using but in general you will be able to uh, leverage whatever the material already available okay online okay but it's all about how you'll read and then go deep into it and if you look at some of the previous devops reports these reports actually will help you uh, if you go deep into devops okay that means what is the adoption uh, rate okay into the industry okay and also how is each company implementing devops for example if i show you this some samples around the industry like how capgemini is following their uh, implementation model for devops okay like the structure will be different for each company each organization how they follow okay but overall the concept would be accelerating the delivery that's it okay that's for uh, by devops right so how are they using these devops teams how their scrum teams are actually uh, uh, basically structured okay and how this entire organization and how they have multiple pods this is one particular company and you can actually talk about uh, aws best practices basically this is what happens in aws okay you have a traditional operations team so if you look at this traditional way of looking at uh, things okay you have a traditional operations team where the engineering teams, application developments, platform team, and operations team are working in silos. Okay, so like, uh, and they they have their own part, and what is going to connect them is basically ITSM, okay, information technology service management tool. Okay, that will actually be nothing but where you will raise a change to other team. There will be an SLA. They will follow those uh, SLAs, and then you will be able to deliver. So. SLA is basically a service level agreement where let's say you got a request today how many days it will take for you to fulfill that request okay and you will be defining those things okay and uh, just like for example if you order a pizza they will say exactly 17 minutes you will get it or 30 minutes you will get it otherwise it will be free kind of thing right so that's what is called an SLA so cloud ops is another thing that AWS has recently implemented okay where they leverage a lot of the cloud where applications and operations team are working together platform is sub working separate where their primary responsibility is give the cloud platform to the development teams similarly when it really grows into a devops model so everyone is one team it's all one team which is called devops and this terminology devops is treated little differently okay in various uh, companies so majority of the companies will not call that particular team as devops team don't be surprised if you get an interview into a team which is called as a release engineering or a development team or any other teams actually because devops majority of the companies treat that as a culture 
okay devops is just a culture we don't need to hire a devops engineer and some of the companies also believe that there is no role called devops engineer there is no role called devops engineer it's all about culture but in order to change that culture in order to implement that culture you need people with devops knowledge and experience okay so they they can be hiring you as an infrastructure engineer they can be hiring you as a cm engineer they can be hiring as build engineer that's definitely that's okay because roles names doesn't matter actually each company has their own convention okay but end of the day concept is what is the role are uh, you going to play what is the job that you going to do okay uh, so if you are actually building this pipeline cicd pipeline you are developing those scripts and you are going to automate this entire delivery chain that's it that's what is devops for us okay the role can be anything the role can be name anything actually okay. so this is how uh, in fact the aws has evolved okay in the overall strategy okay and uh, this, is, this is where how you can actually sustain optimize and grow more. that's a model that i have used of course okay and hey, how they evolved from a traditional operations to uh, devops okay and um, i'm not going to go through each and every so if you look at deloitte operating model this is how they will operate in this entire devops culture okay and if you look at this particular uh, slide okay so it's a completely data driven uh, uh, it model okay where you will have a different org structure for each and every type of development for example i'm looking at this agile development look at this development model is basically uh, you have an agile uh, so from waterfall we evolved into uh, agile and the main key thing there is basically devops so devops is the primary enabler so how the organizations has evolved okay is basically from a, so if you look at this there are various dimensions of organizational evolution by the way okay so this is the operating model from uh, sdlc development methodology waterfall to agile and then devops is the primary enabler similarly from hierarchical organization you have changed your organization into product line organizations where now if you look at large companies they used to have a top like a vertical top down hierarchy so many groups so many people under a senior leader like that now every company is going into a product line organization so what do you mean by product line organization so let's say i have uh, 10 di different departments okay and earlier each department is going to be a vertical actually so our line of business they used to call it as okay so now so like everything that happens in that line of business usually you will have a senior person either a vp or a cio someone who heads that particular line of business all those people will be reporting into that now the entire lines of business concept is going away so they have divided the organization into product space okay so product in the sense the line of business concept is gone and you put customer at in the uh, front face let's say there is a uh, website that you are serving okay let, uh, take, let's take the telecom example okay airtel or jio or anything you have various packages that you will be uh, delivering to the customer right and also you have different user types that means you can have a simple uh, mobile connection for your uh, individual and you can have a home connection okay as a landline and you can have your uh, basically uh, uh, what we uh, call it as dht connection for your um, uh, home tv okay and you can also have a broadband connection from the same uh, uh, company right so these is the various customer channels for for club business so the products are developed based on the customer channels okay so you have four channels and each channel may have different products okay let's say even for a simple sim card that you're going to buy you will have three four different packages okay so go with this plan this is the slab this is go with this plan this is the slab kind of thing so everything is basically a product for that particular customer so now organizations stopped putting the hierarchical model they are now starting at customer first from the customer they started okay for this particular type of customer what is the product and for this product the entire end to end is owned by one person which is the product owner basically 
So organizational hierarchies are keep on changing in that aspect. So I'm not going to go deep into other uh, areas because our relevance is more on to the uh, development model. Okay. And you can also uh, look at the release model a little bit. Basically, we already talked about it. In the waterfall model, it's going to take yearly, okay, or quarterly we used to deliver something, okay. And that became monthly delivery when it comes to HA, okay. And why it is possible? Because of continuous delivery. So again, it's a uh, DevOps concept. And same from an architecture model, earlier companies used to have monolithic architecture, which is like everything in one place, okay. They have all those systems interconnected or maybe all in one place. Then later we have um, uh, developed three tier architecture and became that became an entire architecture actually. So if you uh, read through some of the development methodologies and concepts around, okay, how this uh, architecture is going to change, right? Okay. So then the three tier architecture and entire architecture now became microservices. Okay. So now microservices actually in huge demand. If you know how to mic develop microservices and APIs to connect those microservices that's changing actually so and imagine if you have one application you need to build uh, uh, four to five times in a sprint okay and that one application can be split into 10 different microservices okay and you need to develop those many microservices and deliver those many microservices then how much effort that you need okay just for building and then delivering that particular code so that's where it's really overwhelming that's where you definitely need automation of these builds and automation of these delivery practices similar thing okay you have a process driven approach earlier now it is completely practice driven how you are going to deliver that practice and more value that's going to provide and earlier we used to the old days we used to have physical data centers now you have all virtual data centers and cloud enablement that's happening clouds and containers are making it possible and uh, same thing we used to have all in-house development models earlier like there is a company, everything will be developed in their company. Now companies stop uh, going with that methodology. If you are expert in that particular uh, area, you develop it in house. But if you are not expert, okay, then you better leverage, okay, whatever the outsourcing methodologies are, okay. So let's say if I am an expert in particular uh, telecom domain, okay, and I wanted to enter into pharma, rather than actually and going five, six years understanding that entire pharma industry and develop uh, solutions for that, I would rather buy an IT company which will be already developing products for pharma and I can integrate that into my organization. That will be easy. So that's what the organizations are nowadays following or I can leverage the consulting services through any of the consulting companies that we have. Okay. And from a support model perspective, the traditional support, the production support especially, used to have this L1, L2, L3 approach. So L1 is the basically first level of defense, okay? L2 is second level of defense, L3 is third level of defense. First level of defense is more on people who are watching those dashboards, monitoring those systems. The moment there is an issue, they will have a standard script to execute or standard way to react. If nothing comes up in the standard way and the issue is not yet fixed, then they will escalate to L2 and then that will keep on going up to L3 and the overall development team to fix the code in case if there's a code issue. That's a traditional approach. Now the approach completely got changed. Okay. So everything is basically skill support. Now what we are doing in the industry is that we are putting your experts, SMEs, okay, technology people into the L1 support. Okay. So we are not calling it as L1 support. We are directly calling it as like new concepts are evolving like mission control okay so that mission control is actually going to help you where you have highly skilled people watching or monitoring the things directly available for you if a customer calls so mostly and also we started using the self-service the entire l1 is now moved to self-service because if it is a script they're executing for a particular task so uh, i don't know how many of you usually call the customer care for any of the issues right so the moment you call any customer care the, they will ask a standard set of questions, right? Okay. Okay. So what happened? Is it not working? Like, let's say you, you call customer care that your laptop is not working. So they will have some standard questions. Are you getting a blue screen or is it not yet starting yet? Okay. Or uh, even if it is starting, your connectivity is not working. These are the standard set of questions. So based on your answer, 
they will have a script on their screen okay so then they will walk you through the standard four or five steps then the app mission has evolved such a way that do you really need a person to do all these things there are two ways to do this you can basically write a, a robotics bot okay an rpa bot okay and that will take care of everything or you can actually have a chat bot basically those chat bots are nothing but robotic bot right so nowadays if you open up any website earlier you need to call a customer care center and then they will be walking you through all these solutions now every website will pop up a chat bot the moment you have an issue and you can chat basically it's nothing but a bot in, in the back end that's chatting with you it's not a person okay so we automated all those roles into chat bots okay so the chat bot can help you the same way earlier an l1 person is able to help okay so the same thing is evolving okay now it is becoming more of a self service self help using those artificial intelligence and chat bots or what not right so that's the way the entire enterprise is evolving actually so your organization is changing your development architecture is changing from monolith to microservices your development models are changing from waterfall to agile okay and uh, your release models everything is changing basically so this is the evolution and this is where devops continuous delivery is everything is evolving and if you look at this support model how the support model is evolving this is self service and self help but this is actually called sr site reliability engineering that's the latest uh, one uh, we we have been uh, talking about okay so that's around the agile development methodologies and how it's actually going to help how devops is going to play a key role okay in the agile development methodologies right okay so any questions so far on the agile we are actually going to get into the actual tools and everything of devops okay from tomorrow but i want to take any questions for this last 10 minutes you have or uh, i need also some feedback around am i going too fast or can i slow down or uh, is it okay with this current phase or uh, you need any different way of uh, explanation anything that you can talk about or we can spend this 15 minutes for a quick intro for each of you also just to know you better uh yeah this is shrikant uh yeah so far so so good uh, yeah yeah okay i'm following shrikant. shrikant you have any past experience yeah uh from last 6 years i'm working as a uh, ba developer so okay Measurely into TQ and ClickSense, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Reporting yeah. tools, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. So yeah, I'll go one at a time. I see two names as Dell. I don't know what's their actual names. Okay. I think one of them is Gopi earlier who spoke. Yes, sir. I am Gopi, sir. Yeah, okay. I think you you talked already, right? You are new to IT and uh, you you are uh, from electrical background, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good, Gopi. So Suresh Gandhi. Yes, sir. It's me. Yeah, Suresh. Actually, what's your background? Actually, I'm from non. Actually, I'm from non-IT background, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, new to this all. Okay. yeah i i think i i want to be little bit cautious for all the folks who are not new to it am i going too fast or is it uh, okay nothing sir you are doing good okay and uh, basically you you need to read a lot okay so okay. you can go through this link and then uh, read about agile then you will be able to understand more okay because i am uh, not going deep into some of this agile and scrum concepts We'll go deep into those tools that we will be using in DevOps. Okay, but these are relevant actually for the. Let's say you're working as a developer or a DevOps engineer tomorrow in any team. The entire team is going to talk about how the agile practice is going to work. So then uh, you will be confused. So that's why I just wanted to give all of you guys these details. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, any requirement other than tools, sir, for a DevOps? Uh... 
Yeah, so DevOps is like the, uh, you, you need to be jack of all trades. That's the simple definition of jack ops, uh, DevOps, right? So basically, you need to understand how the entire ecosystem works. Okay, so what is your project? You need to understand. Okay, and uh, tooling is primary thing. Okay, technically, what you will be doing is you will be understanding each and every tool. You will be integrating all those tools using your CI or CD tools, right? Like Jenkins and all. It, but is there any requirement of learning uh, Linux commands or uh, Linux? Yes, yes. Are we going to explain that? Yeah, we will. We will go through that one actually. So you need to learn some commands. See, nowadays the commands are becoming easy. Okay, so basically okay. you will have a self help for a lot of these commands. Okay, and but you need to know which command to use when. Okay, that's the key thing. Okay, so because you, you Google is there, you just search and you will get the complete examples of how you use the command but you need to understand when to use it okay that particular command so yes we is will there, be using some of the commands yeah is there any scripting language to in the process of devops sir yes the scripting is also <clears throat> there okay but let's say you will be using uh, gradle as one of the scripting language or you can use basic shell perl and all these things but nowadays okay. there are a lot of integration tools that are coming up you don't need to <clears throat> really create a lot of scripts okay so traditionally okay. the way it used to work is especially for deployment we used to write okay. a lot of deployment automation scripts okay. and those are like heavy uh, perl or tickle or shell scripts basically okay now you have the simple uh, apis or plugins that came up in uh, tools like Jenkins, you don't need to write okay. any scripting. Okay, but okay. let's say if you are using Jenkins pipeline, you will be writing some scripting, and there will be a lot of help available in uh, uh, Jenkins where it will make your job very easy. I'll show you how easy it will be to create those pipelines and write some scripts also. Okay, okay. so basically you can generate your script dynamically. Like let's say you select four or five fields on what are the values you need and you click on generate a script it will generate a script for you so there are a lot of tools like that so yeah the entire uh, uh, industry is evolving towards uh, less code no code or zero code kind of concepts okay yeah. okay sir. yeah but Thanks. definitely it's good to understand the basic linux commands and uh, have some basic grip on scripting and all these things okay sir. Yeah. thank you sir. Okay, good. So, who's next? Lakshman. Yeah, I think you are going uh, fine. Yeah. I am okay, from Do you have any experience, Lakshman? Yeah, I have a strong mainframe uh, background uh, and I know all this uh, a little bit. Oh, okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. yeah. And you're trying to switch uh, into DevOps. That's the reason you, you went to this. Yeah, I'm planning to switch to AWS and I'm just uh, planning to add this DevOps as a basic skill. Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah. Good. Uh, I see Madhavi next. Okay, let's. Yeah, Madhavi. Uh, hi, I'm Madhavi Poretti and I'm a. SQL developer. Okay. Um, last 16 years. Okay, and, and you're switch. also trying to switch uh, the roles yes. here, or you yeah. so want to expand your current role? I am planning to switch to DevOps. Okay, okay, good. Today I missed the class. Is there any way you can uh, share the recording? Yeah, the recording will be shared with all of you. Thanks, Madhavi. Namrita? Hey, hi, I'm currently working as a network engineer, so I'm just trying to watch, shift my career to DevOps. Okay, okay. Thanks, Namrita. And uh, Raghavini. Hey, hi. I'm Raghavini. I'm doing uh, my master's in AUSA. I just want to learn about the DevOps so that I can track the jobs easily. That's why I'm joining this class. 
Okay, so uh, Raghavani, you have any uh, experience already? You are working on something? Uh, I don't have experience on IT. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is the first first area that you want to explore. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Raghavan. Ravindra? Hi, sir, this is Ravindra. I'm a BC student. Okay. But there is no any experience uh, about uh, coding languages. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm taking to DevOps coaching. Okay. Thanks, Ravindra. Uh, Rohini? Okay, someone Sri. I'm not able to see the full name. It's called Sri. Maybe they are away from the computers. Okay, so yeah, uh, we'll continue with the tools from tomorrow. So first thing what we need, especially to practice DevOps is, we need a code base, right? So, but we don't need to really bug, uh, borrow or develop any code base. We can actually create any type of project using Maven. So there are some simple, uh, 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 basically archetypes or templates that Maven has, okay? So we can leverage those archetypes or templates to create Whatever the type of code, let's say you are developing a web project, you can develop a simple web uh, archive. Okay. Uh, and uh, okay, I think uh, Raghavani has a question how many days it will take uh, for the course? So, as we discussed uh, yesterday, uh, it will be 45 days. That means the classes will be only on the weekdays. Okay. And overall classes will be 30 plus. Okay. And we'll actually adjust as, uh, let's say, if we have break a couple of days or if we need to go slow on a particular topic, okay, we can actually go um, uh, some more days also, okay. It, it's on all of us actually how we wanted to uh, take it up and uh, we can actually add some additional concepts also, yeah. So Ravindra is asking for a book. Uh, so, okay, there are a lot of books I would, I can recommend, okay. Uh, if you're really uh, interested to read into books, I would read one, I would recommend all of you to read one books, which is called The Phoenix Project, okay. So, this is the book. And you can get it in Amazon, okay? Or you, I think you will get a PDF copy also, okay? But you can uh, try this book, The Phoenix Project. This is one book that will actually help you to understand how a company would be without DevOps and how a company would be with DevOps, okay? And it's a beautifully written book, actually, okay? So you will enjoy like a normal novel, okay? So the first half of the book will be talking about complete chaotic uh, organizational arrangement, how people are basically throwing at each other the ball around, okay, you, it's your fault and uh, it's uh, different teams fault and all these things. Then when they started implementing DevOps, okay. So this project is mostly talking about the first part actually, okay, around uh, how chaotic a particular company can be without DevOps. That's the first uh, good thing. And the really, uh, last few sections will talk about the DevOps implementation, okay, on this, right? And there is a second book, uh, which I would recommend after reading this book. First, I would recommend, first read this and then go to that one. So, which is called the DevOps Handbook, okay? Yeah, you can actually use this as uh, this one actually, this DevOps handbook, okay. So this DevOps handbook would be the second book. So if you read these two in sequence, the Phoenix project and the DevOps handbook, then you will understand the overall uh, 
concept of entire devops why it is important okay and uh, what are the various uh, focus areas that we can actually look at okay from uh, all this uh, book okay and this these are two books you need more books let me know okay there is another famous book recently which is actually written by a lot of uh, phd guys every cio is using it okay across the industry which is called accelerate this is the book okay so accelerate is the book that is actually going to help you a lot around the current challenges that every company is facing about all the speed of delivery quality of delivery production stability and all these things so this is not only talking about devops but this will talk about a larger problem that organizations are facing one is speed of delivery which devops is going to solve second one is stability actually how production is going to need to be very stable okay and it will talk about sre concepts also okay and uh, I, and it talk about the operating models of teams also how the development engineering basically development teams need to evolve and everything okay so basically it talks about how the teams need to be scaled building and scaling high performance technology organizations so for someone like a very senior who want to build the larger organizations this is a very good reference book actually okay and you will get some summaries also if you can't read the entire book online this is one good book okay and uh, there will be some if you are interested in sre there will be a lot of other books also okay and of course the google directly developed a book called sre itself okay site relative site reliability engineering by google okay and that would be another book i would recommend okay there are so many books on devops by the way okay so on on the books i think ravindra you got your answer and uh, vasu is asking can you explain the actual role of a devops engineer in real time project okay that's a good question so the actual role of a devops engineer okay so as the standard devops diagram shows let me show you uh, three circle uh, so this is what okay i want to show you this right so you have a development team you have an it operations team which is called production support you have an application delivery okay so what is the difference between delivery and uh, development team this is more of okay uh, deployment or release engineering kind of a thing, thing right so devops is exactly sitting in between so let's say you have a project you are developing the entire core okay you need someone so earlier scrum example let's take this scrum example you have this five six developers okay who are developing the code you have a sprint of 30 days or four weeks okay you are like let's say first day you are deciding what's your story points what are the user stories that will go into sprint then every developer will go and develop the code okay and they will do their unit testing in their own uh, local machine then who's going to bring all this code together who's going to build this code together create a package out of it do the deployment onto testing environment and if something fails in the deployments or something goes wrong in the code integration who will be that one person that is accountable or responsible for creating all this together okay and that's also a story point right in general project development that's also a story point so that is the devops engineer role so as a devops engineer the primary role is going to be once the development is done okay so the devops engineer's primary role is going to be create all take the, all the code the latest and greatest code from of course the latest branches and integrate that together combine that create a common package okay and put that into the test environment deploy that into the test environment okay and all these environments will be owned by this person okay any issues on the environment any issues with the deployment any config issues okay anything will be owned by this devops person so once that is deployed again integration testing de developers will take that url and then they will test either their features individually developed features are available or not and they will say sit is pass same the same package will be deployed back to uat user acceptance environment 
and end users will come and test yes this is the features that we want and now you can proceed for production deployment so only thing that devops engineer will not do in the current construct is that they are not having access to production deployments that's a typical release engineering job actually so we call them as release engineers or uh, uh, basically sometimes we call them as deployment engineers also okay so some companies follow that line between segregation of duties is what they call it as segregation of duties that whoever has production access they should not have access to code okay and vice versa okay so that's why developers will create a release package or what we call it as a implementation plan okay so you need to follow these instructions uh, then uh, we'll be able to uh, just move on with this okay so i need to drop for another session actually okay but keep the questions coming okay and if we have any questions we'll continue uh, in the next session okay thank you very much everyone thank you, thank you.